And employees of the Ministry of Finance in Ghana have been asked to work from home as the ministry waits for results of tests taken by all staff. While the finance ministry is taking a precautionary measure, other outfits like the Ghana Cocoa Board's Accra office rather, was closed after infections um, and also was the case with the Tema office and the Ghana Greed Company, Greedco, and the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company Limited, Boast. An internal memo to all staff said staff who test positive for the virus will be informed and will receive the necessary care from appropriate health authorities designated by the Ministry of Health. Meanwhile, concerns continue to be raised over ongoing voter registration exercise, which many fear could lead to a spike in cases across the country. Many people visiting these centers have openly flouted mask-wearing orders and physical distancing rules. And now we are going to be quickly joined by uh, our guest uh, to, of course, uh, quickly share his uh, thoughts on this. Good afternoon and welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, quickly, let's talk about your country's electoral commission, which insists it has done very well in managing coronavirus safety protocols at registration centers amid the ongoing voter registration exercise. In spite of, of uh, signs of obvious flouting of face mask and social distance, so do you agree that you know they have done well enough? Well, I think. Um there is first thing, Ghana is doing so many testing at a very rapid stage, uh, rapid rate. Um, the government still wants to ensure that the December election takes place, and part of the process is to... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. So part of the process is to ensure that um, the voters' registration process, which is uh, ensuring that new voters are updated in the register, um, so currently we have one month of that process where people are renewing or updating or new entrants are registering their voters ID. Um, there are centers that are observing the safety protocols and there are centers that are obviously flouting uh, the safety protocol. Um, but nevertheless, government feels that um, as much as the case will keep rising, um, there is no need to uh, put a hold on the electoral process. Okay, all right. Recoveries from records are also heading to the 15,000 mark, while deaths are at uh, 122, according to records released on Sunday, the 5th of July. How reassured are you by the current government um, um, and the efforts to contain the spread of the virus? Yeah, so there are concerns that um, we are not testing as much as we can, um, but also there are arguments that more tests are being um, handled. But the key issue is there are a lot of people that are unsymptomatic. Uh, so they have signs, mild signs, and with time they get well over time, they don't need to visit the hospital. Um, so yeah, um, the death rate has been pretty low, um, just below 130 people dead, um, but so much recovery. Um, yeah, but there are more cases adding every day. And I think Ghana hasn't reached the peak yet. We are yet to reach our peak. We're expecting much more increase in the rate. Um, as we can see in South Africa with over 200,000 cases. So, yeah, but notwithstanding, um, government is, is ensuring that uh, more people get tested and that we have enough um, holding facilities. Because as we speak, the minister, the senior minister is in isolation. Health Minister is in isolation. The president is in isolation after coming in contact with um, someone who tested positive for the virus. So um, that has been the situation so far. Okay. And there are also suggestions that maybe the Ghanaian people are becoming complacent in adhering to uh, safety guidelines. How, how true is this? And what would be your suggestion, um, of course, uh, to the Ghanaian people to you know, help fix the situation? Yeah, there are a lot of people that don't believe that COVID is real. It's, it's still an issue, especially in um, low-income communities. Um, some people are propagating that it's COVID is a disease or sickness for the rich and affluent people. And I think it simply boils down to the fact that they don't know uh, within their circles, they've not heard of someone or a friend or a, or a distant friend who has died or got infected before. And I, like I said, we haven't gotten to that peak. You get to hear that when you're over 200 cases, then you begin to know someone who knows someone that got infected 
or pass away. So it's pretty early. The infection rate is um, it's very slow, um, but also maybe we are not testing enough, uh, and maybe people are getting well, people are getting infected and having had our medicine. There are, there are a lot of local people that don't believe in going to the hospital. There are religious say that don't believe in hospital. They treat themselves. Um, so we can really say that that is the actual number, but that are the number of people we've tested. So, um, yeah, Ghanaians are, are slow to that process of accepting. And a lot of people are also get into the normal life and not believing that this is really happening. Okay, but well, one thing that I believe might convince them um, that it is real, just like in Nigeria, Ghana has also seen some high-profile uh, profile members getting infected. Is that maybe going to send a strong message to the Ghanaian people about the reality of COVID-19? It is, it is. So, for instance, shops, um, lots of shops, bank, corporate offices, you can't enter without a temperature taken, without a, a proper hand washing and sanitation and observing social distancing protocol. Uh, but if you move out of the main cities and you go out to the market, we still have an open market system where there is absolutely no respect for social distancing and any of those protocols. Uh, I mean, how many people can afford hand sanitizers or even a nose mask? Um, so these are some of the concerns. Um, the people that are highly vulnerable are low-income households in slum communities. They can't afford nose masks or hand sanitizers. Um, so we see a lot of observation of these um, protocols in middle and high-income households and corporate offices. Um, so I think it also boils down to privilege. Not everybody is privileged to really fully, you know, take into consideration those measures to really be safe. It's about privilege as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Prince Kwame Agbata, for joining us. And uh, we would be speaking with you as soon as possible. Remember to stay safe. Thank you.